here, Virginia? But I don't want to. I'm afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. You've come here to find peace, Virginia. That's right, Virginia, peace. So come on now, come up to the house. Must I? Do I have to? Of course you have to, Virginia. So come now, come up to the house. Virginia? Up the stairs, child. Up the stairs. Of course she's going up the stairs. She knows what she has to do. Don't you, Virginia? No. No, I, I really don't know. You'll see when you get there. Now go up the stairs. All right. What you have witnessed, my friends, was, of course, a dream. But was it a fearful dream of self-destruction? A dark premonition of murder? Or was it one of those nightmares which mean just the opposite of what they see? Well, as sure as my name is Boris Karloff, you're going to find out. And in doing so, you'll meet an attractive family named Farrington. Marion, Bert, and Dick Farrington. In fact, that's the title of our story, An Attractive Family. There's nothing one could dislike about them, unless you object to the fact that they occasionally commit a casual murder. Of course, you really shouldn't object to that. After all, they only do it when it's absolutely necessary. But then I'll let you form your own opinion. And now, Permit me to introduce our players. They are Richard Long, Joan Tetzel, Otto Kruger, Leo G. Carroll, and Joyce Bouliphant. Now remember, no hasty judgments. I'm sure there are several attractive families living on the same block right there with you. That's a shocking thought, wouldn't you say? Sage, 
only it's not Miss Farrington anymore, Mr. Lamb. It's Mrs. Drake. This is my husband, George. He's from Iowa. How do, Mr. Drake? We're glad to meet you, Mr. Lamb. So this is Lake Manawasakawama. They tell me that's an Indian word, meaning the lake that has no bottom. Yeah. Exaggeration, though. Deepest spot ain't but 800 feet. Oh, <laughs> Don't worry, darling. We're going to stay on top of it. There you be, Miss Farrington. Excuse me, Mrs. Drake. You saved you the best one. Well, uh, you take the bow, sis. I'll take the stern, and George can ride the luxury in the middle. Get in, darling. Well, uh, couldn't we take one of the rowboats? They look steadier. Oh, but a rowboat's so unromantic. Dick and I have been canoeing out to Pine Island for picnics since we were babies. Just get in. <laughs> In my husband's part of Iowa, they don't have any lakes, just farmland. He owns 300 acres of it. Being on water makes him a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> don't you worry, Miss Drake. Ain't hardly ripple out there, Dick. Don't expect this until late. We're going to show my husband what a real New England picnic is like. All set, Miss uh, Mrs. Drake? All set. Push us off. Have a good time. Three hundred acres, I wake on land. That'd be worth about, uh... Mm. Oh, doesn't the air smell wonderful? The pines and the fir trees. Admit it, George, darling, you are enjoying yourself. It is kind of fun, Precious when you get used to it. <laughs> Poor George. In a whole week at Niagara Falls, I couldn't get him in the boat that goes to the edge of the falls. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that I never learned to swim. Well, don't worry, George. If we do tip over, just don't panic. That's the worst thing you can do in the water, panic. Do we really have to start back to Iowa tomorrow, darling? Couldn't we wait just until Uncle Bert gets back from Europe? I do so want you to meet Uncle Bert. Well, I'm sorry, Precious, but the corn's getting ripe, and. You know how it is with corn. Yeah, especially 300 acres of it. Oh, George, my paddle. Get it, quick. Oh, of course, sugar. Not, not too far, George. Great jumping grasshoppers. Just like you said he would. And Mr. Lamb surely heard him. Yes, he's untying one of the rowboats now. It'll take him about three minutes to get here. Ah, well, that's about one more minute and old George will need. Uh, you did manage that double indemnity insurance when George made out his will. But only for 40000 uh, Well, I do hope the payment is prompt. We have all those back taxes to settle up. And Uncle Bird is waiting in Beeritz for some money. I'm sure everything will work out. Mr. Lamb will be a perfect witness. Now I think you better start diving. George's body. Mr. Lamb's benefit. And you don't bring him up too soon. Yes, of course. Mr. Lamb! Help! 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 Mr. Lamb! Help! 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 Thank you, Uncle Bert, for bringing us. It's as gorgeous as you said it was. The best view in this part of Mexico. Now, you two stay where you are. I have a surprise for you. It's back in the car. What does he mean, a surprise? Well, with Uncle Bert, you'd never know. I hope you don't mind his barging in on our honeymoon. But he was in Mexico City, and he did want to meet you. Oh, I'm glad he came. I like him. 
It's nice to have an uncle and a sister-in-law, even though I haven't met her. Well, you will, just as soon as she gets back from Monte Carlo. It feels so good to be part of a family again. Being brought up by a bank is pretty dull, even though they do take good care of your money. Yeah, so I understand, darling. You see, we Farringtons have been a very closely knit unit, so I can guess how lonely it's been for you. It's been even worse for Ginny. She's so much younger than I am, she never did know father or mother. All her life, she's been in boarding schools. Dick, when I phoned her, she was just quivering with excitement about our elopement. She can hardly believe it's true. Sometimes, sometimes I can't quite believe it either. I mean, that you actually picked me. Oh, well, maybe this will convince you. Look, these first. Now hold it, just as you are. That's it. Now you see, that picture couldn't be posed. That had to be real. Uncle Bird, where did you get that thing? Oh, I know, some chap in the village. I rented it from him and he filled it full of colored film and swore on his mother's name that I'd get gorgeous pictures to show Mariana when I fly to Biarritz next week. Why, Uncle Bird, how thoughtful of you. Yes, yes, but uh, I'm not sure that I know how this gadget works. Look, you go on kissing her and then I'll fiddle with it. <laughs> May I have my glasses, darling? Oh, here they are. Uh, no, no, over here. No, Please, no, no, Dick, over here. Don't ever tease me about my glasses. I can't see a thing without them. Oh, I'm sorry, and darling. I've always been so terribly self-conscious about it. I've always been such a wallflower, convinced men don't make passes at girls who wear glasses. I still don't see how you ever came to pick me. Dick, I don't know, I, I can't work at this thing above. Look, I, I have a little snapshot camera back in the car. Would you get it for me? Oh, sure thing, Uncle Bert. Then, uh, meanwhile, I'll try to get one of Alice in this. Oh. Right. Now, let's see, dear. Uh, now, just stay where you are, darling. And, uh, no, I think perhaps without your glasses, huh? Of course. Oh, that's splendid. I don't seem to be able to find you in this viewer gadget. Now look, go to your left a bit, will you? That's now. Now, back a step or two. Yes, now, a little farther. Luckily, we made joint wills in each other's favor two days ago. Yes, and also luckily, the evidence that it was an accident is here on this film. Evidence that will satisfy even a bank. Scarcely carved the rose last night. I think a good idea, too, would be to change butchers. Now, Mr. Judson's given us some very inferior cuts lately. That's his way of hinting you should pay his bill, Uncle Bert. It's rather large. I see. Well, I thought that might be it. The grocer's also been hinting, not to mention the others. Well... Then I would say that uh, it places the family situation in uh, 
was a little sticky position, what? Mm -hmm. Have you seen Virginia yet this morning? Mm, she's downstairs playing ping pong with Dick. To take her mind off her nightmare last night. These nightmares she's been having ever since she's been here, what, what do you make of them? Dr. Goodson says she's run down from studying too hard for her college examinations. Mm -hmm. Anyone home? <laughs> oh! Well, well, Hello. come in. Come in. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Come in, Major Donnie. Well, are you taking uh, little Ginny for another bird watching today? Yes, indeed I am. Beautiful day for birds. Yes, indeed. Why, what a charming arrangement, Miss Farrington. You have the eye of an artist. Thank you. Uncle Bert, would you go tell Ginny that Major Downey's here? Of course. What was the score yesterday, Major Downey? Oh, fine day for birds. Let me see now. Two yellow warblers. Uh, red-eyed vireo, pair of scarlet tanagers, rose-breasted grosbeak, one cedar waxwing, and I think a pileated woodpecker. <laughs> We're going back again today to have another look at him. I'm so glad you're our neighbor this summer. You're doing our Ginny just worlds of good with these little expeditions. Oh, she's a charming child. So enthusiastic. Shy, very shy. Yes, and so moody. She studied too hard at college. She, she has nightmares. She needs help, Major Downey. All the help we can give her. <laughs> My point, Dick. I win. I beat you two games out of three. You are just quick for me. <laughs> hmm. Not much muscle, but uh, very fast on the feet. Now we change sides. All right. Dick, are these your old toys? Yes, mine and Marion's. We've played here ever since we were old enough to walk. Father always made us put our things back in place when we were through with them. Well, no wonder you're all so neat and efficient. I wish I were neat. I like you the way you are. Oh, Uncle Bert! Ah. I beat Dick, I won! Good, 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 good. Marion Square, she's just too fast for me. Oh, uh -huh. now I'll play you a game, Uncle Bert. Uh, darling, that would be the death of me now. If you'd care to play a game of darts which requires a little more mature skill, we... Oh! I've forgotten. Major Downey's upstairs. He wants to take you bird watching. Major Downey, of course. I promised him I'd go today. Excuse me, Dick. Give my regards to the birds. Oh, well, I'll tell them you said hello. <laughs> game of darts, my boy. Ah! Shall I? No. Oh. Oh. Here I am, Major Downey. Well, I'm sorry if I kept you waiting. We have the whole day, Jenny. The birds is never impatient. <laughs> I think you better take a wrap, darling. Major Downey says you may be late. Oh, well, I'll get my sweater. Here I am already. Oh, Major Downey, do you think we'll see a pileated woodpecker today? If we're lucky. If we're very, very lucky. <laughs> we'll be back about five, Miss Farrington. If we're a little late. Don't worry. Major Downey? Yes? Saturday is Ginny's 21st birthday. We're giving a little party for her. I do hope you'll come. 21st birthday? Oh, that's an extra special occasion. I'll be delighted to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Have fun. talk to you. Yes, sister dear. I've just invited Major Downey to Ginny's birthday party. Oh. She's 21 on Saturday, Uncle Bert. I've been meaning to ask when the happy occasion would be. Here's five dollars. Go to Mrs. Schroeder and order a birthday cake for Saturday. Something special. You'll have to pay her in advance, I'm afraid. Yes. Uncle Bert, I want you to stroll around town and invite everyone important to the party. Dr. Goodson, Mrs. Ferguson, the Williamses. I'll leave it up to you. I understand. I'll go to Ratter's and or ask them to cater the party itself. About 20 people? Everything the very finest. Oh, absolutely. Well, after all, there's no harm in planning the very nicest kind of party, is there? Certainly not. Since the poor child isn't going to live to enjoy it.
I guess I was too late. It's too bad. You're sitting right there on the windowsill. This point, June 29th, male flat bill cuckoo. Mature specimen may be nesting within an abandoned house. That's the old Merivue house, you know. Would you like to go inside? Oh, no. I hate places like that. Well, it looks so... so dead. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Yes, houses die just as people do. Well, this one looks haunted. There's a local story that it is haunted. Well, I can tell just by looking at it. The last of the family, old Junius Merivue, hanged himself in that front room there, under the tower, 15 years ago. The old house is exactly the same now as it was then. They never were able to round up all the rightful heirs. Tom Walker was telling me about it. He's the town constable. Very pleasant man. Well, does his ghost haunt the place? Or, I mean, Mr. Merrivue? Well, the natives think so. Poor old chap ran out of money, and rather than face charity, just, well, just ended it all. The rope he used is still hanging in that room there. You know, originally, the Merrivues were one of the most important families in this region. Merrivues and the Farringtons. Fortunately, they're still flourishing. Well, they never hang themselves. I'm so glad they invited me to spend this summer with them. It's the first chance I've had to get to know them since my sister died. A uh, very pleasant family. Very attractive family. Well, well, it's getting late. Better start back. Well, at least we saw our affiliated woodpecker. You know, a remarkable about that. They've ruined so many telegraph poles with their pet. Jenny, look. What is it? Mushrooms. Mushrooms, my dear. Nature's bounty. Free for the taking. Then, my dear, you shall harvest a crop of mushrooms for your dinner tonight. Here, give me a scarf to put them in. Ginny's birthday. Dick, did you order the cake? Three layers with happy birthday Ginny spelled out in the icing. Cost $4.75. Oh, I had to give Rupert's a $20 deposit on the party itself. Do you suppose? No. I cannot take another dime out of Ginny's estate. Meanwhile, we're out of whiskey. This is the last bottle, and it's empty. We have more important things to worry about than your whiskey, Uncle Bert. Come on, help me, yeah. will you? Precisely. Why are we delaying? You realize Virginia's been with us almost a month? Perhaps you have some helpful suggestion? We have been wasting time. By now, the whole town knows how fond we are of Jenny, and except the fact that we love her. That's why we had to wait. Meanwhile, all we have to do is to wait until next Saturday. And if little Jenny doesn't die before her 21st birthday, You'll have to give an accounting, Dick, of her estate, and the family will be up the spout. Of course, I know how disappointing it is for you. Alice should leave half her estate to her little sister after appointing you executor. But couldn't you have avoided spending Ginny's half, too? I mean, after all, the family wouldn't be in this predicament if you'd just used a little prudence. Now, listen to me, Uncle Bert. Oh, you can no, tell... Let me speak. Uncle Bert. Well... When Dick invested in that South American mining stock, he was only trying to make the family independent of these annoying little makeshifts we've had to resort to in the past. It wasn't his fault there was a revolution. Well, all right, all right, I concede it. The only point is, what do we do next? I've planned a picnic at High Point tomorrow. Ginny loves wildflowers. And there's some very sweet ones growing along the edge of the cliff. Oh, Dick, we saw one. We saw it. A pileated woodpecker. Well, how wonderful. A marvelous specimen. Finest crest I ever saw. I'm glad the day was a success. What have you there, flowers? Oh, no, mushrooms. <laughs> Major Downey found them in the woods, and I picked them myself. Child, those mushrooms are... Well, 
You'll have them for dinner. Okay. I trust Major Downey's judgment. And I'll take them to the kitchen. And thank you, Major Downey, for a lovely day. My pleasure, Miss Jenny. Yes, nature's bounty. No need for anyone to starve in the woods. There are dozens of edible weeds if you know where to look for them. But what happens if you pick the wrong kind? Well, then you quickly discover your mistake. <laughs> oh, yes, very quickly. <laughs> well, I must be going. Goodbye. Goodbye, Bye. Major. Rather an odd sort of bird himself, hmm? Yes. Uh, Marion, what was wrong with those mushrooms? Major Danny has done us a favor. Those mushrooms are extremely poisonous. Denise shall have them all. After all, it was only enough for one. Well, then, we can afford more whiskey, huh? <laughs> <laughs> A good cook is mostly a matter of patience. Oh, then I'll never be one. I'm much too impulsive. I am so hungry. Major Downey just walked me for miles. That's a good way to start an appetite. I'm afraid I'm not very hungry. Where'd you go today? Oh, all over. And then we stumbled on this horrible old house. It it, it was all deserted and empty, and oh, it gave me the shivers. The old Maryview place, I expect. It's been like that ever since Junior's Maryview hanged himself. I couldn't bear to look at it. It, it looks so dead, and oh, I hate dead things. They, they frighten me. Well, then we won't talk about it. Is everybody finished? Yes. Good, then I'll bring in the pot roast. And Ginny's special dish, wild mushrooms. <laughs> oh, please, may I help you? Yes, if you want to, Ginny. She's an appealing little thing when you get to know her. Yeah, it's too bad. Little Ginny is all right. Hey, would you mind taking a bit of advice from an older man? Spare me the sermon, Uncle Bert. I know, I know. If it hadn't been for that revolution down in South America, we'd all be at Monte Carlo right now. Right. South American politics and women, the two most unpredictable things in the world. Salud, Tio. Salud. Dick, ah. look. Uh, Uncle Bert, oh. aren't they beautiful? Beautiful. I picked them myself. Major Downey calls them nature's bounty. Well, eat them, darling. Eat them while they're still hot. <laughs> I will. Major Downey said they'd be delicious. I wish they were enough for everybody. Dick, you try one at least. Uh, not this time, Jenny, dear. Uh, if they're really good, we'll go look for some more soon. That would be fun. Do you know that Major Downey's traveled all over the world? He was an officer with a regiment of Gorkhas in India when he was young. Well, he certainly seems to know a lot about birds and plants. Oh, yes, he does. Tomorrow he's going to take me and show me three wild plants that can be eaten if you're lost in the woods. But tomorrow we were going on the picnic, Jenny. Yes, of course. How could I have forgotten? Well, I'll have to telephone Major Donnie right away because he was going to hire a car. Oh, now look what I've done. Now look what you've done. Ginny, for heaven's sakes. I, I don't know how I could be so careless. Marion, I've broken the spool plate that belonged to your grandmother. I don't know how I can ever forgive myself. Ginny, dear, the plate doesn't matter. We mustn't cry over a few spilled mushrooms. Now, let's just finish our dinner as though nothing had happened. I do like candlelight. There's something so cheerful about it. 
there's just something to be cheerful about. It wasn't Ginny's fault she upset the plate of mushrooms. No use crying over spilled mushrooms. It's an original remark. <laughs> Don't be sarcastic, Uncle Bert. There's still the picnic tomorrow. Yes, well, unfortunately, our little problem child is afraid of great heights, owing to her sister Alice's accident. Best way to get over a morbid fear is to force yourself to face it. Where is Ginny? In her room, I believe. Well, I believe I'll go to mine. Since I've no whiskey, I'll take a book. Fifty Famous Unsolved Murders. Might be something in here we can use. Uncle Bert is worried about the picnic. Well, I don't like it myself. I suppose this Downey character knows that she's afraid of high places. They've been awfully chummy for the last five weeks. She may have told him. Even so, Ginny will just be facing her fear. Why don't you get out the accounts of the estate and go over them? That'll keep your mind occupied. All right. But no matter what I do, they will never stand auditing. They'll never have to be audited. Ginny will be dead and will automatically inherit the remainder of her estate. What is it, dear? Another nightmare? Yes. Hello, Miss Farrington. Anything wrong? Constable Walker, go down and tell him Ginny's just having another nightmare. Another nightmare. Yes, of course. It's all right, Ginny. It's all right. Tell me about it if you want to. I just feel so ashamed screaming like that. There's nothing to be ashamed of. But it's just so silly. I, I started dreaming about that old house. The Maryview house? Yes. Oh, Mary, and it was horrible. I was in my nightgown, and, and something was making me go into the house. And I, I didn't want to. But voices kept calling to me, telling me I had to go in. And I did. Mary, and it was horrible. Go on, Ginny. Tell me what happened then, in your dream. What happened then, Ginny? I've been hearing about her nightmares. She would ought to have some doctrine, maybe. Well, she did see Dr. Goodson, but the medicine he gave her doesn't seem to be helping very much. Dr. Goodson. If she was my kin, I'd have to see one of these here specialist fellows. Well, that's a good idea, Constable. We may try that. Well, it wouldn't do no harm, I reckon. Meanwhile, we're trying to cheer her up a little bit. We're gonna take her on a picnic tomorrow. If the weather clears. Oh, she's gonna clear all right. Yeah, she'll clear by afternoon. I'd have an afternoon picnic. Thanks, Constable. We'll do that. And thanks again for dropping by. All right. Good night. Good night. And that's when I woke up. And the shadows made me put the rope around my neck. And I knew then I was going to hang myself, just like poor old Mr. Merriview. Oh, Marion. Do you think I'm ill? Of course not. I'm very angry with Major Downey for showing you that horrible old house. Now you just go right back to sleep. I promise you, you won't have any more nightmares. Tomorrow we'll have a lovely picnic and everything will seem different. 
You're so sweet to me. And you take such good care of me. We try to, darling. For Alice's sake. For dear Alice's sake. Lucy, get me Dr. Goodson's office, please. Uncle Bert. Hello. Yeah, I'm back. I was beginning to wonder. Uh, uh, hello, Dr. Goodson. I wanted some advice from you. What well, about Dick's sister-in-law? Yes, Ginny. She had a specially bad nightmare last night, and I was wondering if perhaps a specialist in Boston... Oh, I, I, I'm so glad you think so. Dr. Harvey Winters, I, I'll write it down. No, don't bother about the number. Lucy can get him for me. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Lucy, I want to make a person-to-person -person call to Boston. Dr. Harvey Winters. Yes. Uh, well, I don't know the number, but you can get it from information. He's a very famous psychiatrist. Hmm. Call me back as soon as you get him. Well, Uncle Bert? Well, uh, everything is all right. Just the way you want it. You sure? You were gone so long. Uh, well, I had to make a detour. Yeah, I had to pick up uh, an old friend. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm going to get Dick and Ginny started. Good. Ginny! Call me as soon as the call comes through. Ginny. I look awful. I'm, I feel terrible. I mean, about the silly way I acted last night. Oh, anybody can have a nightmare. But I screamed so well, half the town must have heard me. Everybody must think I'm sick. You know. Now, it doesn't matter what everybody thinks. And you're not going to have any more nightmares. That, I promise. But you make me feel so much better. Ah, here's Marion with the picnic basket. All ready to go, sister dear? Uncle Bert and I will be delayed, but it's so late already, you two start. Oh. Go on, don't worry about us. Go and have a good time. All right, that we will. Now, come on, Jenny. Don't look like you're going to a funeral. We're going to have fun. We're going to a picnic. <laughs> Bye. Marion. Your call from Boston is ready. Oh, good. Not only is the doctor on the phone, but Malvina French... The Widow McGuire and Mrs. Edgy, the town witch. Hello, Dr. Winters. Uh, this is Marion Farrington in Cliffside. Uh, Cliffside, Dr. G Goodson gave me your name. Uh, yes. Uh, doctor, I'd like to make an appointment as soon as possible. No, no, no not for myself, but for a young relative. Well, sh she's been having recurrent nightmares and is feeling depressed and... I'm afraid, Doctor, that she may be developing suicidal tendencies, but I, I mustn't talk about it on the phone. I... Yes, Thursday at three would be fine. Thank you very much, Doctor. We'll be there. In an hour, the whole town will know about my call to Boston. You know what this town thinks of anyone who has to see a psychiatrist. How long do you think we should wait? It's Marion and Uncle Bert's own fault. Well, you don't suppose something happened to them? Oh, no. They'll turn up. Listen. Well, that's a warbler. Major Donnie taught me. Uh-huh. What kind? Well, I don't know. It's a yellow warbler. Well, how do you know? I saw it. Where? Come on, I'll show you. Over here. No, no. 
Over there. No, no, it wasn't there. Over here. Oh, now you're teasing me. <laughs> What's the matter, Ginny? It's a beautiful view. I'm afraid of heights. Oh, come on, Ginny. You have to fight your fears. Dick, no, please, some other time. High places make me dizzy. Ever since I found out how Alice died. What? All right, Ginny, dear. No sense in getting dizzy, is there? I I've always been a silly goose. Alice was a brave one of the family. Dick, I I'm so glad she was happy, even if it was only for a few days. Well, what do you mean? Well, she wrote to me the morning, the morning she died, uh, about how wonderfully happy she was. There was just one thing she couldn't understand. What do you mean, Ginny? Well, just why you loved her. Well, I mean, she was so plain and, and awkward and shy. Well, not to me, she wasn't. Oh, she was beautiful. She loved you so much. You were the only man who ever realized how nice she actually was. Well, listen, we're getting a little morbid, aren't we? Now, if you don't want to look at the cliffs, then let's explore the woods, okay? All right. Which way? Uh, this way. There's a place I want to show you. Yes, I know. Come on. Please, no, I'm afraid. Now, you can't stay afraid of everything all your life. Now, look around you. You said in your dreams you heard voices whispering to you. Well, you don't hear any voices now, do you? Well, that's because it was just a nightmare. And that's just a very old house with no shadows, no voices, nothing to be afraid of. Come on. Believe me, Ginny, it's necessary. And after this, you won't have any more nightmares. Come on. This is the room where Mr. Merrivale hanged himself. your throat, Virginia. No, I can't, Dick. I, I can't. The only way to... 
to fight your fears. Put the rope around your neck and you'll see that it's harmless. No, Dick, please, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm Do afraid. Do as Virginia. Can't you see we're trying to help you? Dick, take your hands. Uncle Bert, strap them. Right, up. All right, let's get this thing over with. You're going to kill me! Nonsense, dear. You're going to kill yourself. No one will doubt it for a moment. In a fit of depression, you slipped away and acted out your nightmare. You've been planning to kill me all along, haven't you? Even when you were being so sweet. There's nothing personal, Virginia, dear. This is purely a financial necessity. And you killed Alice, too. You married her just for her money, and then you killed her. Well, maybe I did. But I gave her a week of happiness first, didn't I? Not everybody gets that. Well, you're just an attractive family of, of murderers. Uncle Bert, take away the stool. Right. I wouldn't do that if I was you, Mr. Parrington. Not unless you want your head blown off. Stand back from her, all of you. Go on, quickly. I thought you were going to be too late. Oh, sorry, Johnny. We had to get every word recorded. It's all over now. Major Darnick, Constable Walker, I really don't know what this means. We were trying to help poor Ginny. Get her to act out her nightmare so she could forget it. Now, you don't expect us to believe that, do you, Miss Farrington? We were in the next room. We heard every word. I happen to be Jenny's godfather. You always suspected you killed Alice. When you invited Jenny here, we suspected you wanted to kill her, too. Those mushrooms and the dreams were simply ruses to trap you. When you tried to feed me those poisonous mushrooms, we were sure of it. I told you, women in South American politics... I know you... the most unpredictable things in the world. Take them away, Constable. Take them away. Downstairs, all of you. Don't forget, this is a double-action gun. Loaded with buckshot. Jenny, my dear, you are wonderful. And I think we can call a halt to our bird-watching now. After all, how can we ever top three vultures?